Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Notando and I make videos on construction, lifestyle and travel. I um, posted a question on Instagram asking you to ask me a question about anything. I actually didn't specify it to like QSing and stuff, but I just wanted to break the ice. And let's read through your questions. And this is the most random batch of questions I've ever gotten. I'm not going to lie. Like, everyone is asking for different things or different things that are so, which I love to see. Ooh. The first question is, what are the pros and cons of working in construction company and consulting respect? respect? There's not enough space <laughs> when you ask a question on Instagram. So I'm going to assume the question is, what are the pros and cons of working in on a construction company versus a consulting company okay this one deserves a video on its own and i think i have done a video more looking at the consulting part it's one this this actually this topic always comes up a lot and i i would love to dive into it but for the sake of this video the pros of working on sites i would say from my experience number one is that the bills are already done for you so depending on how big the company is company is and what you work on i work for a very big company so the trades on the projects would be separated so you'd get like a brickwork qs you'd get a plumbing qs you'd get a um concrete qs and <clears throat> what i liked about that is that we personally did not have to worry about creating a fresh boq what we worked on as a junior as well because i don't know how it gets the higher you go is focusing on the specific trade paying the subcontractor but um the company and the BOQ portion of stuff is already done for you. You literally just download it from the software. You even dismantle it so that it works for you and your subcontractor. I realized from my experience, and I'm realizing that not all of us will have the same experience. But so contracting was very more on hands on. It's about what this guy did, how much they get paid, and I'll report whether or not we're making a loss or making a profit. With this guy, are we within budget? You. Just focus on your trade and on the work that's been done on your recons that everything balances out this is what we've paid this is the material we've bought this is um how much we got paid so you literally just make sure that everything balances out from money in money out material in material pr work produced um and you just focus on the actual work that's been done now when you move to consulting <clears throat> You are making the bills, from my experience. Um, I got to a point where you are creating a bill from scratch. So you measure, you create the bill, you write the preambles, you make sure that the bill looks like... I was actually shook a little bit with how contracting is so bill... I mean, consulting is so bill-driven. Um, so that's one major difference that I can say. Um, pros and cons. Uh, pros of working in consulting is that you might have fixed hours. Um, uh, Pro of working on sites is that you have a bit of flexibility when it comes to the BOQ. I know that this is not a very comparative um, comparison. Um, cons, I feel like it was too specific. But anyway, pros of working on sites. The work is very, there's room for creativity to, for you to format things the way you want to do it. Con for working on site is the hours. The hours can be ridiculous. Like you usually have 6 a.m. meetings. And then sometimes you finish at like 7 p.m. Um, consulting is a bit more refined and there's a flexibility in where you can work. Th that's one pro and con I can think of. Um, Work-wise, there's a lot. I can't, I don't even know how deep I should go like with my first answer, you know. Okay, second question. It's not a question, it's morning. I hope you're well. Morning, good afternoon, whenever you watch this. I am very well, thank you. And then... Do you believe in marriage and would you like to get married one day? Why are you asking me to ask? I'm thinking this person does not really follow the channel. Um, but I'll answer the question. I don't know. I have marriage phobia. I don't know why. I, I, may, I think I do. I don't know. I don't know. This question is very hard. I believe in marriage with the right person. Yes, so I'm going to answer the question. <laughs> what do you do during your spare time? During my spare time, I now go to the gym 
I go out with my friends, have brunches, um, dinners with my friends. I love that. And I go on dates with my partner, you know. Um, yeah, that's what I do with my free time. I sleep as well. Actually, I'm lying. I can't sleep when I have free time. It's so weird. Like, I'd be tired for the whole week. And it's time to take a nap. I'm just like, nah, I can do other things. I also do YouTube during my free time. I like filming videos. I plan videos sometimes. I've got this little notebook with all my video ideas. Um, some are more ambitious than others, but that's what I do during my free time. And also, I travel during my free time. I've been traveling a lot. Um, yeah, and attending events and stuff like that. That's what I like doing with my free time. How many siblings do you have? I have two siblings, two sisters, one older and one younger. We are decades apart. Um, love my sisters two bits. Yeah, so I have two sisters and I am the middle child. Not a question, but I am a quantity surveying student and you inspire me a lot. Thank you. Thank you, darling. I'm so glad that you find my content inspiring. I aim to do that. Also, when you get to start working, please don't be shocked at how hard it's going to be. It's life in general. It's going to be hard. But I'm glad that I'm here to like hold your hand and guide you and give you this insight before you get into the industry. How do we effectively change jobs to increase salaries? We, <coughs> we do just that. We effectively change jobs. Um, you apply for jobs, number one and you they'll give you a better offer than where you're working that's how you do it effectively um i would recommend that you stay certain periods obviously at a said company and when you leave you shouldn't leave like on a bad note so yeah that's pretty much how you do it you keep applying don't relax and you keep applying but i'd also um encourage you to find a job that is very healthy for your mental health because yeah you might be chasing salaries all the time but Sometimes you work in places that are detrimental, that the money does not even make a difference to your life. So you do just that. You, you keep applying. That's how you effectively change jobs to increase salary. Sometimes you keep applying so that you can ask your current job, especially if they see value in you, to increase your salary. You know, you're like, oh yeah, I got an offer from whoever, whoever. Um, here they offer me this. Can you match it? But I'd always encourage you to only do this if you are willing to leave if they don't match it because then it's awkward yeah when are we traveling together girl now that you're in south africa i am going to send you airbnbs and we should start with something local because i'm broke but yeah but soon soon before you leave before you go back to your country we will be traveling we have to we have to hey nasando please do a video about registering as a professional qs okay i will do this video there's two ways in which you can register as a professional qs in south africa tell me if there's more there's with the rics and there's with um saqs saqs p saqs Ish, this always acronym always gets me but please let me know in the comments which one you want the rics or the saqsp and then i'll do a video on that how far are you willing to go with QS? Do you see yourself having your own QS consulting firm in the future? Yo, this is a very hard question. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I've had such an interesting journey in the industry, in the in the field that I've questioned how long I'd stay in it. So I don't I don't think I'd have my own firm to be honest with you. But maybe. I don't know. I know. Um, right now, I'm just taking it one one month at a time. At least it stopped being one hour at a time. I'm taking it one month at a time, one year at a time. Um, I do not envision an entire QS firm for myself. Um, oh, I don't think I'm that passionate about it. There's other... What I actually would like to look into is more like a recruiting side of things. Um... I would like to have my own recruiting agency somehow just so I can help people get the jobs because that's also the one thing that I like about being a QS it's get, giving the right contract to the job so I feel like there's a bit there's a there's something there in me that would like to do that um more like what is this thing that the recruitment but like for overseas work 
um, and matching the right candidate to the right company and all of those things and taking into account like everything like personality um, you, your fit what you like what you're looking for money everything like that like I'd love to actually have like a recruitment agency that just works on placing construction professionals in the right job wherever in the country or in the world because like I said, the worst thing is getting into a company where your personality or you personally don't match with it. Everybody has a different experience. In one organization, you can have six people who have six different experiences. Some love it, some hate it, some are horrified, some are like, oh my gosh, this is the best time of my life. So I would like to have an agency that fosters these matches so that you don't have to like go through trauma like some of us had to. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's where I see myself. But as for like... A, Curious firm, I don't see myself going in that direction. But maybe things will change, I don't know. Where can I apply for work? Integrated learning for next year. I'm a first year building student. I get this one a lot um, and I'm ready to answer it. So VAC work, I have a video on it. I'll stitch it or put it in the description so that you can find it. Um, I wish I could say that you can, you, if you click, I always say this. If you go to this website, you'll find this and they'll say they have this many openings, but I literally do not. I do not know. I personally don't have the connections or anybody that I know who's taking in VACWORK students. But if somebody lets me know, oh, they're looking for, I'll always post it on my Instagram story. I'll always share that. Maybe I should also share it on here on YouTube. Let me know if you want me to share it here on the community post on YouTube. I'll also share it there. But honestly, I, I, I don't have a place for you to go apply. Um, I'll just link the video here. But in that video, I literally summarize ways in which you can increase your chances of getting VAC work. And uh, it's, 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 it's literally about putting yourself out there and asking all the time, walking to sites, um, asking a lot of people. Don't just ask me. Like, ask everyone that you see who's a QS. Like, hey, I'm looking for VAC work. Can you help me? And it's always better to go in person. I'm not going to lie. Because people don't read their emails. Or people will see the email, but like it will escape them. You know when you start working, and I know that as a student, I used to like judge people. We send them like research papers and stuff. I'm just like, oh yeah, now that they're working, they don't have time to like answer research questions or time for students and stuff. But when you start working, you realize why. There is so much to do that you literally consciously need to get out of your time to yo guys sometimes you get so busy it's hectic sometimes you don't feel like you have that power to even help whoever because you're going through your imposter syndrome because you thought that after varsity you're going to get into the workplace and be the best you can be but you're dealing with feelings of like not being great like you're like why i was cum laude why am i not succeeding in this so a lot of young professionals are going through that switch from student to young professional and the, it's a bit of a shock to your system. You're like, oh my gosh, I, do I suck? <laughs> Why am I working so hard? I thought I was going to be able to go to Pilates every Thursday, but I'm here working until midnight. What is this? And everybody goes through like an identity crisis and questioning their lives and wondering. And then the pay also like gets to you. You're like, they said curiouses are going to make money. So yeah, a lot of professionals are going through like that shock of what was sold and what is and it's hard for them to like combine the two so just wait for them but also you understand when you get there to settle in and just be like okay fine this is my reality what how do i make lemonade with the situation but yeah um i'll share posts on my instagram whenever i come across ones i'll share the video you literally need to ask everybody, knock on all the doors, physically. Maybe Google cures firms, whether you want to be in consulting, you don't want to be on sites, Google QS firms, find the addresses, go knock, leave your CV or something. Um, yeah, and sometimes they'll turn you away. Oh my gosh, I've got a cramp. They might turn you away, but you... Uh, the chances are that you might be turned away but there's also a chance of you being told okay we admire your you know bravery to come all the way here so we're gonna give you this job or whatever so yeah this is unsolicited random advice but like when you're looking for VAC work or a job please look at banks while you're still in school this is one thing that I wish um, I was told when I was in school because we are so adamant of being on a construction site and 
you know, wearing the hard hats and the reflector, and we're like, oh my gosh, construction professionals, hey. <laughs> but the bankers, where does the money stay? At the bank. So they have what? The moolah. So, and banks only take or are very receptive to graduates. Like they want to take you from school. They don't want to take you when you have the site experience. My mind, in my mind, I was just like, okay, I'm gonna start on sites and then maybe move to a bank. Nah, usually they take them young. So, as a graduate, you, it's your opportunity, it's your chance. Don't be like us. This is your chance to like be in the banking sector. Look at banks for your vac work as well. Look at banks for opportunities. Look at graduate programs for QSs at banks. There's a lot of them. Um, open your mind to that. Don't just search big construction companies to work for or consulting firms to work for. Look at banks too. You are a construction professional. Don't just look at construction companies and contracting companies, consulting companies. Look at banks as well. There are so many opportunities there. And you start off at a higher salary. Like I can confidently say this because I've asked a few people what their starting salaries were and it was higher than people who were on site or in the consulting industry so yeah thank you so much for all your questions i hope you found this video helpful please don't like don't forget i mean like please don't forget to like and share and subscribe i'll see you later in another video